So this is a question. It says consider the circuit below and assume the capacitor is initially uncharged. Good to know. Uh, let me write it down. Q at T equals zero is zero. Uh, it, that's the common assumption because it's uh, realistic. <laughs> so capacitor is initially uncharged. Um, and all right. So as you are reading this question, uh, this is what I hope you will notice. It asks you two different questions. One about when the switch is closed at t equals zero. This is the um, this is the uh, transient behavior, um, or um, the, well, yeah, it's the transient behavior. So it's the one end of the time dependence that we can quickly analyze without doing too much uh, calculus with the ca uh, capacitor, which is what we need to treat the time dependence fully. And the other question is where, you know, long after the switch is closed. So this is the asymptotic behavior that you see in other um, asymptotic behavior, uh, which is you see in um, which is uh, what you see uh, in other cases as well. So we talked more about uh, how to handle the asymptotic behavior that in, in the asymptotic case, when the circuit has reached a steady state, then what you say, is, what you do is you treat capacitor as open circuit. And in more practical terms, what that means is current through the capacitor is equal to zero. And we'll do that. And for now, we'll so, um, so we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. <laughs> to the part A, we'll handle this uh, transient part of the behavior. And um, I think this is the one where, depending on circumstances, you might see a couple different ways of handling it. You might hear, hear this advice somewhere. And in case you hear it, I do want to say it's not wrong, although potentially misleading in different places. Um, so you might hear the phrase uh, treat capacitor as a closed circuit or wire. And in this particular case, that will turn out to be correct. And that's a certainly very common way to treat capacitor. Um, but I think uh, I would be uh, um, treating you better if, you, if I give you the more general rule, uh, of which this is a special case. Uh, the more general rule is that you use this. Um, you use the definition of capacitance. So use the definition of capacitance, which says capacitance is Q over V, or turn it around, it gives you the voltage across the capacitor as uh, Q over C. And this is what I mean, the above phrase here is a special case of this, because in this particular case, we are saying that the amount of charge on the capacitor is at zero. So if you imagine plugging in Q equals zero, then we are getting that the change of voltage across capacitor is a zero. And that's the exact same thing you would say about a piece of wire. That's why in this case, the moment you close the circuit, you would treat the capacitor like it's just a straight piece of wire. Um, so. So uh, I want you to note this general, uh, generally applicable rule because so for some strange, maybe more difficult questions, it could have been stated in this way where they tell you what the initial amount of charge on the capacitor is that's not equal to zero. And then you have to do it, then you know, your uh, approach will change a little bit based on that amount of voltage across the capacitor that's implied by the amount of charge. Uh, but the, the case you see in this question is the common case. If somehow the uh, 
question forgot to tell you this, you would assume that anyway. That's the default reasonable assumption. So with that, uh, let's answer part A. So we are saying the, uh, we are for the purpose of part A, we are treating the capacitor as a straight piece of wire, um, which means, I guess, no voltage change across it. Oh, then I see what it does. It shorts out the register R1, or you can think of it this way. Uh, register R1 is in parallel with the capacitor C1. And at this moment in time, the capacitor basically has a zero resistance. And if you remember about adding, adding uh, registers in parallel, the equivalent resistance is uh, smaller than the smallest resistance. So when you are shorting it out, so all this is just gonna be zero ohm. So, um, so I can just basically ignore this resistance because no current will be flowing through that. All available current is just going through the wire here. So initial current through R2 will be simply be given by the V1 divided by R2. And watch out the units, you know, milliampere. No. So, so that's it, I'm done. <laughs> so this is why um, it's uh, much simpler to deal with capacitors as uh, for these special cases of where it's either it's a transient behavior or now part B, the asymptotic behavior. Uh, asymptotic behavior will be similarly simple enough. So, um, so now part B, it asks what is the, um, what is the current through the resistor R2, okay, again, when the capacitor is fully charged long after the switch is closed. Okay, so let me write down the very first thing I know, which is the current through capacitor is zero. Oh, then I can probably just ignore this entire branch altogether. So the circuit basically looks like this here. Um, it's uh, simply a, a single battery in series with the two registers. So the current there is going to be V1 divided by the sum of the two resistances, R1 plus R2. So in handling these capacitors in these two limiting cases, either it's a transient behavior or, or the asymptotic behavior, the trick is to know how to simplify the capacitor. And once you know how to simplify it, then the rest uh, is pretty simple. It, you know, it, usually the questions containing these capacitors tend to be simpler circuits, not that they necessarily are. 